All right, we're going to go ahead and get started, everyone. Welcome to the Legal Aid of North Carolina expungement presentation. The presentation lasts about 30 minutes, and it will help you determine if you are eligible for an expungement. Our presenters today are Ayana Robinson and Ryan Francis. Ayana Robinson is the supervising attorney of the expunction team at the Legal Aid of North Carolina Helpline, and Ryan Francis is an expunction paralegal with the Legal Aid of North Carolina Helpline. After the presentation, you will have an opportunity to ask general questions to our presenters using either the chat or question and answer feature if you're connected through Zoom. If you're watching us on Facebook, you can also type comments there and we'll be able to take those questions at the end. After viewing the video, if you believe you may be eligible for an expunction, you can apply for help from Legal Aid by calling our Legal Aid Helpline at 866-219-5262 or through our website at www.legalaidnc.org. Before we start the video, we'd like to make an important note about expungements as they relate to immigration status. If you're not a United States citizen, please consult with an immigration attorney before proceeding with an expungement. An expungement may adversely affect your legal immigration status in the United States. Thank you for attending today for today's presentation. And with that, I will turn it over to Ryan and Ayana. Greetings, my name is Ayana Robinson. Um, as already said, I'm the supervising attorney of Legal Aid of North Carolina's expansion team. I'm here with Ryan Francis. Shout out to Hello. Daniel Linares, Patrick Ryan, and Daisy Michelle Rodriguez, who make up the rest of the expansion team. Today, we're here to discuss our expansion work here in North Carolina. We'll give an overview of the expansion eligibility, the expansion process. We'll review situations where one would be eligible for an expansion. We will explain certificates of release. We will discuss COVID-19 updates and how to do business during this pandemic. And as already said, there will be a question and answer session at the end. In case you're watching this and you're not even 100% sure who and what Legal Aid of North Carolina is, we are a nonprofit law firm that provides free legal services and civil matters to the most vulnerable in our state to ensure equal access to justice. Where do we stand during this pandemic? It's important for everyone to know we are open and fully operational in all of the areas we assist in. We are open and fully operational in the areas of housing, food stamps, unemployment, social security, consumer and educational law, domestic violence, and of course, expunctions. Our website is listed as well as our phone number. For expunctions, you can press one for English and then the options are one, two, and three. Our website has a ton of information about all of the areas that we assist in. Today, we'll focus on expunctions. Okay, so I'm going to start out with what is an expunction. And the first thing I should say is that you're going to hear the terms expunction and expungement used interchangeably. They mean the exact same thing. They refer to the same process. I myself am extremely partial to expunction, so I'm going to try very hard to use both, and it's going to be a challenge. Now, an expungement clears your record of a charge or conviction entirely. It is completely gone in most cases. Uh, there are still some jobs where you may be required to report that you have had an expunction or expungement. For example, if you're applying for a job with a uniform service or something that requires a security clearance or applying to become an attorney and work at a courthouse, you may still need to report to your prospective employer that you have had an expunction. Uh, there's also certain federal jobs that may require you to disclose that information. Uh, expunction in North Carolina is obviously granted by the state, which means federally they don't really pay as much attention to it as we would here. So who's eligible for an expunction? Lots of people, but unfortunately not as many as you might think. Expunctions are only granted by power of a statute which means the law must specifically provide for it or you're not eligible for it. There are no special circumstances. This isn't an area of law where you plead your case with a convincing or sympathetic argument and the judge is allowed to grant you an expunction. Either you're eligible by statute or you're not. Now, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna discuss three of the most common expunctions that we do uh, in our normal course of work. Um, and those are generally 
a first time conviction of certain offenses occurring before the age of 18, first time conviction of a nonviolent offense, regardless at age when the offense occurred, and then charges that were dismissed or were found not guilty. I think most people are surprised to realize that not guilty, not responsible dismissed charges remain on your criminal record until you actively seek to remove them by the process of expunction. So what does that mean? You're charged with a robbery, the case is dismissed, it's still on your record. You're charged with larceny by an employee and you do a deferred prosecution dismissal, which means essentially you agree to pay it back, maybe you do some community service, you come back in a year, you've kept your nose clean, and the DA agrees to dismiss it. Or you're charged with possession with intent to sell and deliver cocaine, you go all the way to trial and you're found not guilty. All of those charges are still on your record until you actively seek an expunction. This is important when you think about all of the employers and landlords who cannot accurately read a background check. It's also even a little bit unusual because most states will automatically expunge dismissed or not guilty charges, but North Carolina is not one of those. That's all on your record until you petition the court for an expunction. So let's talk about this first one here, misdemeanor conviction occurring before the age of 18. So to be eligible for this, you must have been convicted of a misdemeanor offense that was committed before you turned 18. It doesn't matter when your actual court date was when you were convicted. It only matters that the offense was committed before you turned 18 years old. In order to be eligible for this expunction, you cannot have had any prior convictions other than traffic offenses. And that's very common. You'll see that in all of the expunctions that we talk about. They pretty much just generally do not care about traffic offenses whatsoever. Uh, you, you also cannot have had any misdemeanor or felony conviction that occurred for two years after the conviction you're trying to expunge. Uh, you also need to make sure that you fully completed your sentence, and that does include any probationary period. And this expunction can be used on both nonviolent and violent offenses. Also, a prior expungement of any kind does not automatically disqualify you from receiving this one, which is something that comes up in some of the other expunctions that we'll discuss later. All right, so next we have first time convictions of a nonviolent offense, and this is of any age. So in general, you can expunge a single nonviolent felony or misdemeanor, as long as there are no other convictions on your record that occurred at a different time. So as long as you have no convictions that occurred in a, at a different court date. This, is, this expunction is essentially intended for people that, you know, we made a single mistake, but we've been clean since then. You know, you need a do-over, you need a mulligan. So, and again, to receive this expunction, you must have fully completed your sentence, including any probation, payment of fines or fees. Now this, this expunction actually varies a little bit depending on if you are trying to expunge a misdemeanor versus a felony conviction in that the misdemeanor only requires a wait of five years from the date you were convicted of the offense, but the felony conviction requires a 10 year wait. We're actually hopeful that this is going to get lowered in the near future, but our legislature is kind of busy at the moment, I gather. And also to receive this expunction, you must not have received it before. You only get it once. Then finally, we have charges that were dismissed or found not guilty. And this is by far the most common expunction that we do and the most common expunction that is granted in North Carolina by a huge margin. Uh, in order to qualify this for this, you simply need to not have a felony conviction on your record. So no felony conviction, you can expunge any dismissed or not guilty charges that you have. And you can receive this expunction multiple times. So if you got one tomorrow and then you ended up with another di dismissed charge on your record next year, you could, you could uh, request this expunction from the courts again. There's no limit to that in a person's lifetime. Okay, so sort of to review and work it in reverse, when would you not be eligible for an expunction? So generally, violent offenses are not eligible unless you're under the age of 18. Certain offenses are considered violent by nature. So felonies class A through G, 
they're considered violent. And if you have a Class C felony, you simply are not eligible for an expunction. Um, offenses of which assault is an essential element of the crime are also not eligible. So think assault, assault on a female, assault with a deadly weapon, they're not eligible. Some other ones are also deemed violent by definition, and you might not necessarily think that they were. So for example, the use of a commercial vehicle in the commission of a felony is deemed violent, even if the felony itself wasn't really violent. So if you have a violent crime, you're generally not gonna be eligible unless you're under the age of 18. And we mostly see that in the sense of um, 16 and 17 year olds who are charged with assault. Again, only certain felonies are eligible, nothing A through G, which means it must be a class H or I felony only. When you have convictions in separate court sessions, you are not eligible. So a conviction in 2015, a conviction in 2019, you are not eligible for the expunction of your convictions, but you may be eligible for the expunction of your dismissed, not guilty, not responsible charges. Remember, dismissed charges cannot be removed if you have a felony, but that may be that you have a class H felony and you just need to wait out your 10 years. You wait out your 10 years, you get rid of your felony, then we get rid of your dismissed charges. A felony plus a misdemeanor is a 100% no-go. You are stuck with your entire record under the current law. So what's the process for getting an expunction? First step is to get an accurate and complete copy of your criminal record. Then you need to determine eligibility for an expunction. This is not a do-it-yourself presentation on how to do an expunction. This is a general overview of the process and how we can help you. After you've determined eligibility for an expunction, you need to complete the appropriate petition and gather any supporting documentation. The petitions are very specific. They're put out by the AOC, which is the Administrative Office of Courts. Expunctions for convictions require affidavits, both a defendant affidavit and affidavits of character by supporting witnesses. Um, you'll need to identify and follow county-specific filing instructions. And that's where the information on our website comes in. If you click through all the options, there is an option that we have the filing instructions for all 100 counties of North Carolina. Then you need to determine and follow the county-specific instructions for how the petition will be reviewed. So the first step is getting a copy of your record. Couple of ways of going about that. One way is to get an uncertified copy of your record from the clerk of criminal court in the county where you have criminal activity or a charge or a conviction. The clerk's office is usually located inside the courthouse. The clerk of court, what's important here is that the clerk of court can only provide you an uncertified copy and it will only be for one county. So if you've lived in Johnston County your whole life, you've only gotten in trouble in Johnston County, then you're probably okay getting an uncertified record just from Johnston County. Lots of times people tend to have a little bit of issues in surrounding counties. So you may have Johnston County, Hartnett County, one charge in Durham, and then a dismissed charge in Wake County. That has you traveling to each county to get a copy of your criminal record. To avoid that, another way to go is to use the public access terminals at the courthouse. This option is depending upon how confident you feel in your computer skills. They are somewhat user-friendly, but you don't want to miss anything. So you would go to the computer access terminals, the clerks will not help you. You do the search, you find your information, you can email the information back to you. Let's say that's not a real option. The final option is to go to the SBI, the State Bureau of Investigation. You can go to www.sbi.gov, but even that option has its own pros and cons because while it is the most comprehensive background check, and in fact, it's one that the judge will send the request to anyway, it costs $14 and it is time sensitive. So once you have your perfect, I shouldn't say perfect, your complete and accurate background check, now you determine eligibility for an expunction. Again, there are specific AOC forms. Expunctions are rejected for being put on the wrong form. The form is titled Petition in Order of Expunction and will list the specific statute under which you're eligible for. All forms and instructions 
are available on the court's website, and that's www.nccourts.gov. Again, we're not specifically walking you through a do-it-yourself expunction, but a general overview of the process and let you know where we can assist you in this process. So again, just to reiterate what Ayana was just saying here, it could very well be if you are filing for an expunction, you're going to end up putting multiple petitions in a bunch of different clerk of court's office, unfortunately. Because like she said, expunctions are filed with the clerk of court in the county where you were charged, which we uh, call the jurisdiction and venue. So that means if you're trying to expunge multiple convictions or multiple dismissed charges that occurred in, in all kinds of different counties, you're gonna have to travel around a bit, or in this case, hopefully mail, a, a couple different clerk of court's office. So for example, if you're filing for expunction of dismissed charges from your record, you may end up needing to put in a petition at the Superior Court of Bladen County, the District Court of Bladen County, uh, District Court of Wake County, Durham, you know, you could have a whole bunch of them on there potentially. In most counties, well, I'll say in, a, in an increasing number of counties, for a lot of expunctions, there's not a required court appearance, especially for dismissed charge expunctions. We wish this was true of all counties, but unfortunately it is not. There are some counties where you will be required to go to court no matter what expunction you're attempting to get, and you'll have to, you know, go to a hearing before a judge or have an attorney represent you at the hearing uh, in order for the judge to sign it and in order for the expunction to be granted. And unfortunately, that just varies from county to county. There's no real rhyme or reason to it. But a little later on here, I'll show you where on our website you can find information that our paralegals have laboriously documented showing which counties require you to do what steps, which counties are more fiddly than others and give you the contact information for the clerks of court and all that good stuff. So now we'll talk about certificates of relief. So let's say you have two misdemeanors in separate sessions of court. They're not eligible. You are eligible to have to dismiss charges, but you don't have any dismissed charges. Well, let's say you have a felony in one session of court and it's not eligible because you have a misdemeanor and then you have some dismissed charges. You're stuck with your record, but you're not completely out of luck because there is something called a certificate of relief. A certificate of relief is not an expunction. It does not clear your record. I like to say the certificate of relief is like a letter of recommendation and the power of it is it's like a letter of recommendation from the very court that convicted you. It provides employer protection from negligent hiring liability. It protects a landlord from negligent leasing liability. It overrides automatic exclusions and allows for the opportunity of discretion. So if you're in a situation where we don't do X if you have a criminal record, that no longer has to be an automatic exclusion it becomes discretionary. Well, maybe we look at the circumstances. We look at how long ago it was. We look at other mitigating factors. It's also viewed favorably in areas where it's already discretionary. We see it a lot in public housing. We see it a lot with jobs. We see it a lot with schools. So in reality, what does it buy you right now? In the area of employment, it probably buys you 10 more minutes in an interview. You'll have an interview and say, well, I really wish I could. And then you'll say, well, as a matter of fact, you can. Let me tell you about this certificate of relief. Right now, while they're helpful, we really need to flood the market with them. It is very possible that you will have an interview with an employer who's never seen one before. So while they might want to, you may not be the convincing argument that they actually can. But then the next applicant comes and they have one as well. And then the third applicant comes and they start to look into this. So everyone's duty, in my opinion, is to educate employers and landlords about what this is. Just like expunctions, there are eligibility requirements. Um, you can have any number of misdemeanors. So let's just say you had 25 misdemeanors, you were in a really rough patch of your life. They cannot be expunged. You don't have any dismissed charges, but now you're ready to move forward. A certificate of relief would be an option for you. 
um, no more than three Class H or I felonies. Charges that are disposed of in the same court session count as one. So let's say you have a um, 15 counts of credit card fraud, and it's a Class I felony, but they're all resolved on the same day. That is one count against you. At least 12 months must have passed since the end of your sentence, including probation, you need to be either engaged in or seeking to engage in lawful employment um, or going to school. You can't have any criminal charges pending. If you previously applied and been denied, you have to wait 12 months. The silver lining in that is if you apply and are denied, the judge will tell you why. Sometimes it's you must do X. You must complete restitution and maybe you didn't know you had to pay. Um, you must complete your GED. They will tell you the reason for denial. You can go ahead and cure that and apply again in 12 months. Then there must be a finding that granting you this petition would not pose an unreasonable risk to the safety, welfare of the public, or any specific individual. There is a filing fee, just like there's a fee for expunctions, and that fee typically is paid. It doesn't need to be paid in each county that you file. So, um, and again, we can get those fees waived for legal aid of North Carolina clients. So COVID-19 updates, how to do business during this pandemic. Um, pandemic is new. It's a different reality for all of us. We're all adjusting. We are in a national state of emergency. Um, North Carolina Chief Justice Beasley recently issued an order postponing court proceedings until June 1st, 2020. Ultimately, the public and even attorneys without business before the court are being asked to avoid court facilities. Many courts have reduced their hours and their staff. For example, in Wake County, the counters are only open from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. They're using drop boxes for matters that would ordinarily be filed at the clerk's counter, i.e. expunctions. So what can be done in the world of expunctions during this time. You can contact us. We can still determine eligibility. We can still give advice. Sometimes it's no, you're not eligible. Sometimes it's yes, you're eligible, but not now. You're four years into the five-year wait period for a misdemeanor. You're, you're three years into the wait period on a felony. Those are also situations where we tend to use certificates of relief during the wait period. And we can still draft petitions for you. Legal assistant extraordinaire Daisy Michelle Rodriguez surveyed about 20, 25% of the clerk's offices last week, and all of them reported that they are business as usual in a new way. Petitions being filed through the mail are the now preferred method. Some counties are asking that you send a self-addressed stamped envelope. Some are asking or some are saying that you do not. Some are giving specific names of who you should address your envelope to. So ultimately, the best advice is to contact the specific courthouse where you need to file and ask for instructions. But again, that's something that we were already doing because part of the getting expunction process was to determine county-specific instructions. Um, clerks, unfortunately, North Carolina is 100 counties, and we handle our expunctions probably 200 different ways. The clerk's office have said that they will handle service to the district attorney's office, that they will handle getting the petition to the judges for signature before sending it out to the FBI. We suspect that some counties that had hearings before petitions went to the FBI will no longer have those hearings. And if they do, they will certainly be after June 1st. Um, given the time it takes to generally get an expunction, we've always said about six months. There's no reason not to pursue one at this time. We expect the time gap to be even longer. Be aware, though, that we're just adjusting to pandemic life. So, again, we don't know how long this will take. Um, all contact information for clerks are available on our website. Once again, that's legalaidnc.org. Um, Ryan, did you have anything else to add? Uh, if I can, I was going to share them where on the website to find our specific county instructions. That would be excellent. Okay. And to do this without breaking everything. 
Alrighty. So we just go to legal aid, nc.org. Okay, so this is our main website here. So if you click on the self-help library, criminal record expunction, very predominant as it should be. Oh, with the mouse. Yeah, okay. So this part is a little weird. You have to click on dismiss charge records here. And that takes you to the big list of all the counties. And this has the contact information for the clerk's office, the mailing addresses, all the, all the instructions for filing in those counties, the whole shebang. Thank you to our uh, paralegal, Daniel Linares, for that. Did you want to show anything else on the website? Eh, that was the only thing I had planned. I'm not great at the website, but I could try and find something else if you all want. That's fine. We can go on to questions and answers at this point. So as we start questions and answers, we have a few disclaimers. Well, Number I have one, a couple, and it sounds like you do too. <laughs> okay. So a few disclaimers, though. You didn't retain Legal Aid of North Carolina. So we're not agreeing to represent you at this point beyond the scope of this clinic, but we do encourage you to give us a call. Also, there's no attorney-client privilege. This is a public forum, so be wise about what you share. But with that, we're open to questions. So I would just reiterate on that, be careful what you share, please. Uh, well, actually, I'll be the one reading the questions, so we won't be sharing any names. All right, so if you have questions, you can type them directly into the chat. There's, if you're on Zoom, you can type them directly into the chat. There's also a question and answer uh, a function in Zoom that you can use to post your questions there. If you're with us on Facebook, you can put your question in as a comment um, and we'll be able to get to it there. We do have a couple of questions that have already been posted, so we'll start with those. Um, is allowing an unlicensed driver considered a moving violation? This is, that is my first offense prior to receiving a felony drug conviction. I'm not actually clear on the question in terms of allowing an unlicensed driver. Traffic typically has no impact on an expunction. So if we get rid of the traffic, because it's irrelevant, then we're down to would the felony be eligible? And that depends on the specific felony. If it's class A through G, no. If it's H or I, there are no other convictions, and it's been 10 years, yes. Your driving without a license isn't impactful. Okay, and uh, hey, Ryan, you've got a slide that's got the hotline number on it, right? Yep. All uh, right, can we get that up for people? It's like slide two, give me a sec. All right. Oh, there um, it is. While he is yeah, there we go. So that's the, the hotline number for legal aid. Um, as we've mentioned a couple of times, our services are free. We are open. We are providing help. So if you do have uh, uh, additional questions or if you get a, an answer where you, you need some more clarification or just want to see if you qualify, give us a call. All right. So can traffic violations uh, such as speeding, expired registration or card uh, be expunged? Potentially. So the, the way the laws are written, it doesn't seem like that was the intent, but we have had quite a few instances recently where uh, volunteers have successfully gotten traffic offenses expunged as dismissed charges. I don't really, I, I can't really go into it more than that, honestly. It, it, it's something where we're a little hesitant to say yes, but we have had success with it. All right. If you get denied expungement, can you apply for the relief? I think they mean the certificate of relief. It depends if it's eligible. To be eligible for a certificate of relief, it's any number of misdemeanors, but it's only class H and I felonies. So you cannot apply for a certificate of relief for a class C felony. All right. Let's see. I have two charges that were dismissed. Uh, the charges were in Durham County. It says that it is dismissed in the interest of justice. The charges are felony, larceny, and assault, serious bodily injury. Can I get these charges expunged? 
Absolutely. Dismissed is dismissed is dismissed. There are actually, it's a little confusing if you're looking at a record, there's a whole bunch of different, what we call dispositions, case outcomes that all mean dismissed. So like deferred prosecution dismissals, uh, no true bill returned. There's a whole bunch of different ones, but like Ayana said, in the end, if it's dismissed, yes, you can get rid of it. When I do my background, will it tell me what class it is? I assume this is referring to the, the classes of felonies that you were talking about? Not necessarily. Now, one way you can do your background, um, this is something that we use in our process. If you look, if you serve time and you look yourself up on NCDPS, that's the North Carolina Department of Public Safety, and you do like an inmate search or a locator, they tend to say, um, class one misdemeanor, you know, felony class G, felony class H. But in general, no. But if you see something next to it that says NCGS or GS, which stands for general statutes, it'll give you some numbers. If you look that up, that's literally the North Carolina general statutes, it will tell you there. Now that I've answered it that way, that's a bit complicated. And the simple answer is generally no, you wouldn't know. Um, all right, I have a felony from 2006 and would like to remove to seal my record. Is it possible? Uh, I'm just going to say I don't think we have enough information to answer that effectively. I'm going to agree. A felony from 2006, you certainly passed the 10 year wait period, but without knowing what type of felony it is and what class, it is impossible to answer that. Uh, so after this video, go to the legal aid website, go to, I think it's walking through, yeah, it's walking through where to find the, the county instruction websites that you showed. Uh, yes, you're welcome to, to use the county specific, uh, instructions. That's why they're there. You're also welcome to give us a call. Um, let's see. I was told in court, if I could stay out of trouble for 15 years, it would automatically be removed, but it wasn't. I will get in contact. That's not actually a question. Uh, how does the driving license expungement work? 26 years of driving with revoked, 98% are PJC. So, <laughs> license restoration and your driving record are separate from expunction and from your criminal record. There's no expunction to remove driving offenses. Like we said earlier, some, we've had some judges that have authorized expunction of dismissed driving charges in some cases, but if it's a situation where your license has been suspended, that's a whole other process and you have to go through DMV for that. So that's, that's beyond the scope of expunction. Exactly, it's not an expunction, but that is becoming a more and more popular movement. And that's not driver's license expunction, it's driver's license restoration. And it really, that process is rolling out across the state there are some counties that are very open to it. Um, shout out to Durham County for being super progressive. Um, some counties are not there yet. So that really depends upon the county. I would do a internet search, driver's license restoration and put in the county and see. But that is becoming more and more of a thing, but it is not an expunction. Alrighty. If someone committed murder 30 years ago, the person did the time and is now free. The person is doing very well and hasn't gotten into, into any trouble. How can I go about getting them a job? Unfortunately, a lot of determination. They, it's unfortunate, but they would not be eligible for an expunction because murder is a class A or B felony, and they would not be eligible for a certificate of relief. I will uh, recommend the NC Works. There's, that's an organization that we work with a lot, and they have a, a reentry initiative that helps people with exactly that kind of thing. So I'd recommend uh, reaching out to NC Works and seeing if they might have some programs that could help. Absolutely. That was excellent. They are excellent. Um, what happens if it's your first felony but was dropped to a misdemeanor but was still a conviction? then we, it depends. So let's say it was a felony for something violent and you plead it down to a violent misdemeanor, which is assault. So it's, it's some type of felony and you get assault. You're not gonna be able to get rid of the misdemeanor, 
but we can get rid of the reference to a felony because you're not guilty of the felony if you were found guilty or pled to the misdemeanor. Now, let's just say it was a felony, felony larceny, and you plead it down to the misdemeanor version of it. You wait five years, you get rid of both of them. When you get rid of the underlying misdemeanor, you get rid of all references to it, which is why you'll also get rid of the felony. So that is absolutely a possibility. So that, that also applies. Sometimes on your record, you'll see probation charges. So probationary offenses, they can't be expunged on their own. But just like what Ayana was talking about, if the underlying offense that that probationary violation was attached to is expunged, all the probation references go as well. Alrighty. Uh, can embezzlement charges be expunged? No other felonies or misdemeanors. I believe so. I now this is a guess, but if I recall, embezzlement is a class H or I. But I, ninety-eight percent sure that I've seen them expunged, especially if you have no other convictions. Okay. If you pled guilty to a misdemeanor possess, possession charge seven years ago, can it be expunged? No other convictions. It meets the five-year requirement. Looks like you're good. I'm dying on the embezzlement one. I almost want to look it up. Like, I'm sure it's an H. I was kind of thinking about it. <laughs> All right. If a person is a sex offender, it, can, it, can I get it dismissed? I'm not quite understanding it, but if you're already found guilty of a sex offense, then dismiss wouldn't be the proper phrase. Maybe it's if I was found guilty of a sex offense, can I get it expunged? In which case, no, because they are generally not class H or I felonies. And in fact, no, they are considered violent by definition. That's one of those ones where it's defined as violent similar to the driving a work vehicle to commit a felony, it's considered violent. So to, to answer the embezzlement question, felony level embezzlement, as long as it was less than $100,000, is a class, class H felony. There so you go. That is the answer. Now, I will say, outside of what we do, there is a process. Not everyone on the sex offender registry is a lifetime registrant. Sometimes it's 10 years, sometimes it's 15 years, sometimes it's lifetime. If you've passed your 10-year mark or whatever the time you must be on a registry, there is a process to motion the court to be removed from the registry. Legal Aid of North Carolina does not do that, and that is not an expunction. It's a separate process. Can you get a failure to appear for driving court expunged off your record? Still goes back to traffic. Generally, no, but it shouldn't be having an impact Anyway, I, I suspect that there's more to that question, but that would still fall under driver's license restoration. Is that something where they could call the hotline and we could op open a file? No, unfortunately, no. Okay. Uh, on that vein, is it best to call or do the online to apply for services to see if you are eligible? I think that's one I can field. I would encourage you to call. Um, the hold times can be a little bit long, but they're actually way lower than normal right now. Um, so you'll get through more quickly. If you do an online application, we're still going to have to call you back to complete the application process. If you call in, we can do it all in one go. We have uh, some dedicated intake staffers that just do expunction, and they're very knowledgeable and helpful. So that's ideal. All right, uh, this one might be a little bit too detailed. I have two misdemeanors, one from uh, 2016, which was disorderly conduct, and a misdemeanor from 2018, which is shoplifting. When will I be able to get an expungement and or when can I apply for a certificate of relief? You cannot get an expunction because you have two convictions in two different, court, two different court sessions, the two different years you said. If you have any dismissed charges, you can get those removed right now. In terms of when can, you, when can you apply for a certificate of relief, it would appear that you can do that right now, assuming you finished your probation. Now, I don't, 
you know, I don't recall the last year. I think it was 2016. The last conviction was in 2016. I would imagine yeah, that probation period. 2018. It doesn't actually say if their convictions are dismissed. Okay. Well, if they're dismissals, we're good to go. If they're convictions, it sort of depends. I'm not clear on the question then. Yeah, it, it, without a little bit more detail, it's hard to tell. Um, I had a charge from Walmart with a friend. It has been a couple of years. Uh, I paid my fines, but it's still on my record. It is a misdemeanor larceny. Uh, I think they're asking if they'll be eligible. With no other convictions, yes. I have a Class H possession charge from 1994. Can it be uh, dismissed? I think they probably mean expunged. Uh, I have had my rights restored. I haven't been in any trouble since then. If that was the only if thing on your record, then you'd be good to go. Um, and I know that you mentioned you live out of state. That shouldn't matter for purposes of applying for legal aid. We just care where the legal issue is. Yeah. Now, I will say this. Expunctions are state-specific. So while it doesn't matter where you live, it matters where the charge is. Sometimes we get it in reverse. I live in North Carolina. I want an expunction because I got in trouble years ago when I was in Georgia. We cannot do that. We can only help with North Carolina criminal charges. Now, it doesn't matter if you live in New York right now. The charges must be in North Carolina. All right. Uh, charges are uh, AWDW. Is that assault with a deadly weapon? Yes. Assault with a deadly weapon on government official. Am I eligible? I got this charge 2014, case was done by 2015. Only if that case was dismissed. Otherwise, charges that have assault as an essential element are not eligible. Now that would be eligible for a certificate of relief. Okay. Is it possible to remove an arrest if no charges were pressed? I don't know where an arrest would show up if no charges were pressed. The only place that any record of that should exist is at the local, uh, the local PD who handled it. So I wouldn't think that that would be on any sort of database that you could search for. But no, the, now the, I will hear this. Now they get they it's in it's in the local one for sure. It is so they gave us a little bit of clarification yeah, it, on yeah. that. Now, I will say this, when you're getting an expunction, there is a part on the expunction that says arresting agencies. And it's very important to list all the arresting agencies. So we will typically list the sheriff's department because they're the custodian of any mugshots. We'll list the police department that may have arrested you. We will list um, campus police if, you know, you get in trouble at Elon and campus police arrest you and then they take you to the local PD, but then the sheriff's office Whoever you don't tell that you're getting an expunction, they won't know to erase their record. Now, if you only have a record at a local office, there really isn't anything to expunge. But once you have a criminal record, everybody below that will erase their records, if that makes sense. I hope it did. Okay. Um... Okay, I could see I didn't get it. Sorry. So let me clarify. Yeah. When, if you only have an arrest, it's only going to exist at whoever arrested you, and it won't show up anywhere. So there isn't really a way to tell them to get rid of their record. I don't know of a way. If you have a charge and we expunge it, either because it's a conviction or because it was a dismissed charge, in filing for the expunction, we will list every arresting agency that had contact with you. And when the order comes back to expunge your record, a copy goes to every agency we identify. And yes, they will erase your record at that time. But in terms of it was just an arrest, you were never charged. There was no, there's no way to do that. All right, that appeared to uh, clarify the question or the answer. All right, I'm not seeing any other questions, so I believe, oh, wait, I've got one more. As soon as the video is over, do I give Legal Aid a call or go on the website? Uh, 
it, we would recommend that if you're able to call legal aid and and you qualify for us that that uh, you work with us on doing that if that's an option i'd assume that's that's our guidance is give us a call find out if we can help you with it before trying to do it on your own absolutely all right. Well, I think that's everything. Thank you all for coming. This video will be posted uh, on our Facebook page and on the Legal Aid website. Um, and thank you to uh, Ayana and Ryan for being here to present for us today. And with that, I'm going to close this out. Thank you. Thanks.